Good evening and welcome to you all to this service of evening prayer. I think I've got a strange shadow going on over here. I've no idea what that's all about from outside, I think. Perhaps it's because the sunshine's come back out and we're not quite sure what it is. Be pleased to see that I survived all my Zoom meetings today and uh, have managed to get through them all all right. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. A song of God's greatness. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh my God, how excellent is your greatness. You are clothed with majesty and honour, wrapped in light as in a garment. The sun knows the time for its setting. You make darkness that it may be night. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. And you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will make music to my God while I have my being. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. That this evening is may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and for ever. Amen. Psalm number four. In peace I will lie down and sleep. Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You set me at liberty when I was in trouble. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you nobles dishonour my glory? How long will you love vain things and seek after falsehood? But know that the Lord has shown me his marvellous kindness. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices of the righteous and put your trust in the Lord. There are many that say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. You have put gladness in my heart. More than when their corn and wine and oil increase. In peace I will lie down and sleep. For it is you, Lord, only who make me dwell in safety. In peace I will lie down and sleep. Give us today, O God, a glad heart and a clear conscience, that when we come to this day's end, we may rest in peace with Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading is a continuation from the book of Job, this evening reading chapter 7. Do not human beings have a hard surface service on earth? And are not their days like the days of a labourer, like a slave who longs for the shadow, and like labourers who look for their wages? So I am allotted months of emptiness, and nights of misery are apportioned to me. When I lie down, I say, when shall I rise? But the night is long, and I am full of tossing until dawn. My flesh is clothed with worms and dirt. My skin hardens, then breaks out again. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle, and come to their end without hope. Remember that my life is a breath. My eye will never, see, will never again see good. The eye that beholds me will see no more. While your eyes are upon me, I shall be gone. As a cloud fades and vanishes, 
so those who go down to Sheol do not come up. They return no more to their houses, nor do their places know them any more. Therefore I will not restrain my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Am I the sea or a dragon that you set a guard over me? When I say my bed will comfort me, my couch will ease my complaint. Then you scare me with dreams and terrify me with visions, so that I would choose would run. Sorry, so that I would choose strangling and death rather than this body. I loathe my life. I will not live for ever. Let me alone for my days are a breath. What are human beings that you make so much of them, that you set your mind on them? Visit them every morning, test them every moment. Will you not look away from me for a while? Let me alone until I swallow my spittle. If I sin, what do I do to you, you watcher of humanity? Why have you made me your target? Why have I become a burden to you? Why do you not pardon my transgression and take away my iniquity? For now I shall lie in the earth, you shall seek me but I shall not be. Here ends our first reading. A song of God's grace. The glorious grace of God is freely bestowed on us in the beloved. Blessed are you as God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For you have blessed us in Christ Jesus with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. You choose us to be yours in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before you. In love you destined us for adoption as your children through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of your will, to the praise of your glorious grace which you freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In you we have redemption through the blood of Christ, the forgiveness of our sins, according to the riches of your grace, which you have lavished upon us. You have made known to us in all wisdom and insight the mystery of your will, according to your purpose which you set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in Christ, things in heaven and things on earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The glorious grace of God is freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. Our second reading is a continuation from the letter to the Romans, chapter 4, verses 1 to 12. What then are we to say was gained by Abraham, our ancestor according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now to one who works, wages are not reckoned as a gift, but as something due. But to one who without works trusts him, who justifies the ungodly, such faith is reckoned as righteousness. So also David speaks of the blessedness of those to whom God reckons righteousness, irrespective of works. Blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one against whom the Lord will not reckon sin. Is this blessedness then pronounced only on the circumcised or also on the uncircumcised? We, fa we say faith was reckoned to Abraham as righteousness. How then was it reckoned to him? Was it before or after he had been circumcised? It was not after, but before he was circumcised. He received the sign of circumcision as the seal of the righteousness that he had by faith 
while he was still uncircumcised. The purpose was to make him the ancestor of all who believe without being circumcised and who thus have righteousness reckoned to them. And likewise the ancestor of the circumcised who are not only circumcised but who also follow the example of the faith that our ancestor Abram had before he was circumcised. Here ends our second reading. The Magnificat Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will make you ruler over much. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will make you ruler over much. So let us pray. Today we have remembered the life, example and faithfulness of Thomas Ken, who was a bishop of Bath and Wells, a chaplain to Charles II, who was a non-juror, as he refused to accept Mary and William as rulers after James II fled the country. He was also a great hymn writer, many hymns that we still sing today. So we give thanks for him and for his life and inspiration and for the inspiration that he still has today in the words that he has written and by the example that he gave. For our prayer intention, we pray for all schools across the diocese, for head teachers, teaching staff and support staff, as they work to keep children learning and connected with each other. We give thanks for all the staff working in the Diocesan Board of Education. Bless and inspire them as they provide resources for schools and families. Lord, we pray for our schools who were preparing to open to reception class today and have been told that they are unable to do so. We pray that they may use the next couple of weeks really preparing their school buildings and their time to welcome our young people back. We pray that they may all be kept safe, that they may be able to follow the guidance given. We pray for our young people who've missed school and their friends miss that support and daily routine. We pray for parents and carers who've risen to the challenge of homeschooling and for the opportunities that that has brought. We pray for our primary schools, for St Peter's, Holy Trinity and Sudal Road, for our secondary school, for Dhaka, for our nurseries within our parish, and for our schools across our town. Lord, we continue to pray for our key workers and carers, for those who go out to work and those who've been working from home. We pray for those for whom today may have been the first day back at work after quite some time. And we pray for those 
who are preparing to open in the next couple of weeks. Again, we pray for safety and wisdom in how buildings may be used. We pray for our churches as we think about and pray about how we might open, firstly for private prayer and then eventually for worship once again. We pray for all those things that need to be put into place and for acknowledgement that church will not be the same as it once was for quite some time. We continue to pray for our world, praying for your spirit of peace, Lord, in areas where there is unrest and conflict, where there are clashes, where there is violence found today. We pray that if people wish to protest, they do so peacefully, and that we, in some way, find a way to bring about an end to those things which divide your children here on earth those things that divide us through race, through wealth, through sexuality, through gender, all those things that have been used to oppress others. We pray, Lord, that they would be brought to an end, that we would see equality amongst all your children, remembering that we are all created in your image and in your likeness. So Lord, we continue to pray especially for the NHS, for those on the front line and those behind the scenes, those who have worked so hard to keep others safe in these past few months. Of the many that we bring before you who are in need of your healing touch today, so we pray for Bridget, Ian, John, Charlie, Wendy, Lisa, Morris and Margaret. We pray for them wherever they may be this day and for all those that we have commended to your healing touch in body, mind or spirit. We pray for those in hospital, the hospice, at home or in our care homes. We pray also for those who have died, for those who have died recently and those who have died this past day. Help us always to remember the numbers we hear on our briefings, our people, with family, with friends, with stories of their life. And so we pray for those who mourn, for those who carry that pain of bereavement with them, that through the death and resurrection of Jesus, we may know the gift of eternal life given to us all. O God, from whom all blessings flow, by whose providence we are kept, and by whose grace we are directed. Help us through the example of your servant Thomas Ken, faithfully to keep your word, humbly to accept adversity, and steadfastly to worship you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. So as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and for ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me for this service of evening prayer this evening. It's been lovely as always to have your company whether you've watched live or a little bit later on, as you've had opportunity. I hope that you have a good evening, especially now the sun has come out today, and that you stay safe and keep well. Tomorrow we have our usual services of 9 o'clock morning prayer and 5 o'clock evening prayer, if you are able to join me for either or both of those services. 
In the meantime, do take care and remain as always in my prayers.